from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Talk of the Town with Merrill Rose, Harry Chapman, and Debbie Allen around town. I'm excited for you to get a chance to meet our next guest because adventure has always been a way of life for her, whether she's been tracking, tracking grizzly bears as the host of an action adventure show or tackling the slopes as a women's extreme snowboard champion. Greta Gaines is a person who's lived in Nashville and her talents have taken her far away from home, but this week it's music that's bringing her back to Music City. We're delighted to have Greta Gaines joining us for today's Talk of the Town. I, I didn't realize you had so many Nashville roots, but you actually do back in your family history. I do. I didn't realize a lot of it. My, my mother's side of the family was from Middle Tennessee, and my father's side was from Nashville. And they moved to Birmingham around the turn of the century. And I, of course, was raised in New Hampshire. So I, I'm sort of finding out about my southern roots now. And I like to consider myself a southerner. Yeah, and I guess when we first heard your name, it was when you were so big in the, in the snowboarding world, I guess back in the early 90s, yeah. you were uh, into the extreme snowboarding. Oh, what an exciting thing that must have been. That was exciting. And at the same time, I was um, sort of becoming a woman's pioneer in snowboarding. I was also picking up the guitar and teaching myself to play. And it was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and that's where I just sort of, I went to Georgetown, and I, I didn't know what I wanted to be, and I, I went out there to find myself for one winter. Of course, it turned into like eight years, but I, <laughs> I stayed out there, and, um, and I didn't realize that I was one of the only women doing the kind of snowboarding that I was doing yeah. in the backcountry, and I'm still doing it. You are, and, and you've really kind of led the way, I think, for a lot of other women who've wanted to get into these extreme sports. And you, don't you have camps now where yeah. you teach women how to do this? I do. I have a wild women snowboard camp. Mm -hmm. It's out in the canyons. We're not hosting it this year because of the, the Olympics, but yeah. next year we will be. So I've always put a lot of energy into trying to get women into the outdoors and into facing their fears and to doing things they'd never thought that they could do just because I was lucky enough to be there and it was lonely by myself. That was my motivation for starting the camps and, and everything is to, to get women into snowboarding and that of course translated into what I'm doing now with the show that, that I'm doing on the on Oxygen Network because um, it's all about being in the outdoors and exposing women to first time things and I did a bunch of things for the first time I never thought that I would do. Yeah, this really looks like the ultimate dream for somebody who loves adventure because you get to go along with celebrities yeah. to do whatever their favorite extreme thing might be. Yeah, or, like or something fun. that they never, you know, ever even wanted to do. I had a comedian, uh, Ellen Cleghorn, who was on Saturday Night Live, and I took her to trapeze school, and and uh, I watched her just sit up there holding the, the bar for like a 45 minutes, you know, she didn't want to jump. And so, um, yeah, it's been, uh, the summer was pretty crazy, four months on the road, meeting up with celebrities, and also women on the edge of what they're doing. So I would meet, you know, for instance, a woman named Nancy Allenbach, who's a professional caver, and we'd go 200 wow. feet underground, and I hang glided down to Stinson Beach, and like I said, tracked grizzly bears. And some of the things I thought were going to be really scary were not scary, and some things I said, oh, this is a piece of cake, and I just, would, you know, freeze up. And yet, as music has kind of woven itself through your entire life, music is weaving its way into the show as well. We've got a little piece of a clip of you and Sheryl Crow, I guess, jamming together. Yeah, yeah take a look at this. Indian Resolution. for you as a singer and songwriter or for somebody like Cheryl Crow. What did you learn from her? I learned, I've been a fan of Cheryl's for about eight or nine years. I played the Lilith Fair with her, mm -hmm. so I've really been able to, I've been a fan and I've also really looked up to her. She's been such an incredible businesswoman in her career and um, I, of course, am still really trying to break out with my music career. And so the thing I learned from Cheryl is that she is totally focused and she knows exactly what she wants and she is a perfectionist in the best sense of the word in terms of her music mm -hmm. and her musicality. I've watched her grow and get so good on guitar and bass and all these instruments and I'm just I'm just in awe of how focused she is about being serious with her craft. And sometimes I feel a little all over the place. Yeah. Music is really my first love, mm -hmm. but um, I guess I have, I'm a little ADD. I do music and I get really into it and then I'm like, okay, let's go snowboarding or fly fishing. Or but isn't that nice to be able to do so many different things? And folks yeah. are going to get a chance to hear you tomorrow night at 12th and Porter, a place that you've played a lot. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what kind of music we can expect. I have a little bit of difficulty, as most artists do, describing my music. I'd say that it's, a, it's got some country in it, but it's really much more rock and roll, kind of southern rock based. I play electric and acoustic guitar. I have a fabulous five-piece band. It's um, all original. There's a lot of stories, like porch stories, kind of southern gothic stories, stories of girls and um, different positions of life and transitions. And it's, um, it's pretty, it's, I would almost call it fairly literary. I mean, there's 
I'm a serious lyricist, and so if you like lyrics and you like messages, then I think you'll like my form of rock and roll. That's great. Well, you can check it out on her self-titled CD. That would be Greta Gaines. That's right. right. <laughs> and find her tomorrow night at 12th and Porter starting at 9 o'clock. I think they open the doors at 8. You may want to go and get early, get there early to get a good seat. Greta, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Meryl. Appreciate it. Okay. Here are your hosts, Charlie Chase and Kelly Sutton. Say good morning to Greta Gaines. Hello, Greta. on Mornings with Ralph Emery. By the way, Greta, I know you've been in town about a year. By the way, who's your friend over there? This is Daniel Tashin on guitar. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate you coming out this morning, yeah. being a part of the show. We're going to visit with Greta, find out about her television show and her uh, showcase tonight down at uh, 12th and Porter. 12th and Porter, that's Beginning right. Beginning at 9 o'clock. Uh, more on the way. David, just so you know, David, just so you know, Greta was looking around the studio trying to find you. And <laughs> we, we informed her that um, you are in a deer stand at the intersection of 65 and 40 downtown, <laughs> just keeping an eye on the traffic. Speaking of weather, let me point this out. You may or may not be aware of the folklore that's used in predicting Middle Tennessee weather, but Helen Lane in Crab Orchard, Tennessee, for all these years, predicted the weather looking at nature's signs. And unfortunately, uh, she died last year, but her daughter, Melinda, is carrying forth the, uh, 
the legacy. And according to her reports, uh, we had two heavy fogs, so it'd be two heavy snows. Uh, hornets' nests are built low to the ground, and the color of the woolly worms all indicate that we're going to have a pretty serious winter. Do you believe it? Sounds like a bunch of voodoo to me. No. I don't know about that, Charlie. <laughs> Day after Halloween, coming here talking all that mess, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's got the devil in him. No, I'm, I didn't until I came to work. Uh, I'm hiding. No, no, seriously, that, uh, th those things do come true in a lot of cases, you know? Yeah. yeah well, the good. Farmer's Almanac is based on a, this, a lot of the same kind of... Absolutely. Where did you grow up, Greta? I grew up in New Hampshire. Okay, so and did you rely on things like this or the Farmer's Almanac, and were they in in general, true mm. or not? We relied on the radio for snow days. <laughs> yeah. And we, and in the old walk outside, <laughs> finger in the air. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we didn't, it was cold and dark all the time, so you mm -hmm. could pretty much rely on that. Right, but, for, but Kelly, we also count on the National Weather Service to oh. try to back these up. Oh, or, yeah, with oh, yeah. computers and all, right? They, yes, they have Doppler radar, they have all kinds of satellite images that they send to us. So that's how we compute, basically, mm -hmm. what's going to happen. But Shane, you still seem to be That's bothered. all that's of the devil. Computers are oh. taking over the world. <laughs> Don't believe it. There's coded messages in there. Mm -hmm. Coded messages? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, of course, right now, I'm blinking in Morse code uh, signals to my people. I tell oh, you, really? know. What are you talking they know. about? Yeah, what are it's you a secret. If I tell you that, what's the point of the blinking? I can't imagine. I went to school to learn how to do that, and I ain't giving up my secrets right here. You went to school? That's right. It's a secret school, too. I tell you where it is. But... <clears throat> who are I'm your kidding. people? Who, just who are your people? They're out there. I don't even know what camera I'm on. I've been in TV for 15 years and can't tell. I, that's nice. That's a good look, too. Hey, come see me tonight in my miracle she dancing chin. <laughs> Woo! Oh, this as a result of the old bar days. Oh, huh? yeah. Okay. Uh, some things you never get over. Yeah, I understand. Uh, let's get our final <laughs> messages in, shall we? Bring it on. Okay. <laughs> you are at TPAC beginning at 8 o'clock. That's right. Greta, you're at 12th and Porter beginning at 9 o'clock. So, in other words, the evening is planned. If you're that's looking right. for something to do in this town, that's all you have to do. My right? show lasts about an hour, and, and you'll, if you, you yeah, come down If you come at 7.30 to 12th and Porter, you can get... Um, Free food and drinks. Oh, really? And you and, get to talk to me. And then run over and see his show, and then run back and That's see you. Right. We have planned your evening, Nashville. You can <laughs> forget that World Series. Oh, wait a minute. It's on this, this channel. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Don't Tape it. <laughs> Tape it. And all you that. Nielsen families, which camera am I on? <laughs> this one. This one right here. This one Damn right it, here. it's about time. <laughs> Tape the World Series, and then all you Nielsen families write in the book that you you watched it. And then we'll write you watch this show. It's the first day of sweeps, and boy, you made a fine choice of guests <laughs> with me. <didn't> you? <laughs> He's saying what everybody on TV wants to say, but That's we can't right. because we, we're in the anchor positions. <laughs> That's right. What are they going to do to me? I've been kicked off Music Row, been kicked off TV. All i got left live performances, and they'll probably run me out of the building down there tonight. So see me for the last time. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to quickly go to break because they're towing his car out in front of the station here now. <laughs>